Hi, this is Giselle, and this is Social Media Strategies and Tactics. By now, you've hopefully gone through all the classes in the Master Class 101 and have learned the ins and outs of the major social media networks, and you've set up your business profiles. Now we talk strategy and tactics. There's a downloadable PDF of the slides included in this module, and all the links there will be clickable. Many marketers attempt to dive into social media marketing without clearly identifying their audience and targeting. They are so anxious to get to it that they neglect this crucial step. Many also say they lack a consistent or integrated strategy to best reach their audience. So strategy is what you use to accomplish your goals and objectives. If you haven't downloaded it already, here is a link to the strategic marketing plan template. Each business is different, so use this as a guide for your business. As you will see, not every business needs to be on every network. Focus more on the ones that you determine by research and getting to know your target market, which ones will be most effective. Tactics are what you use to implement the strategy. Many marketers jump directly to the tactics without considering the strategy, and all they are doing is wasting time and effort, then say it doesn't work. Here is the tactical plan template, and I will go over that shortly. We talked about SMART goals way back in the first master class. I hope you've come up with several SMART goals, that, and they all are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound. You also need an overall strategy written down. Descriptions of your target market personas, any research that you've uncovered, a content marketing strategy, strategies specifically for each of the networks, your major keywords and hashtags. You should write out some tweets and posts and keep them in a text or a document file for easy access. You're going to do this month to month. Yes, you can have an overall annual goals and strategies, but to manage this logically, work one month at a time. You'll want to take into consideration holidays, seasons, observance days, what's going to be trending. All this needs to be written down and not set in stone. Each month, based on analytics and insights, and we'll cover those in the analytics class, you'll adjust both the strategic and tactical plans. The social media marketing plan is part of your bigger overall marketing plan, which may include offline print advertising, direct mail, or other digital marketing like mobile and email marketing. Social media becomes part of your marketing mix. Your overall marketing plan is then part of your company's business plan. The main objective of all this is to generate leads. Blogging, social media, and email drive traffic to your site. The blog post entices the potential customer to click on the link. Then it's up to the website to convert that visitor into a lead by capturing leads with an enticing calls to action, like download a free ebook or click here for a coupon. Just having sign up for our newsletter may not be enticing enough. Then you need to nurture the lead into a happy camper customer and then into an advocate by getting reviews and referrals. If you feel your website isn't doing its job, check out some of the blog articles on my site for some help. If you'd like me to review your site, schedule a free 30 minute consult. There are basically three types of customers. Rarely will they go from discovery to buying directly. Those are your impulse buyers. The gal that sees a pair of boots on Pinterest and has to have them right away will click on that buy now button. Pinterest, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook are offering these as part of their paid advertising programs. Usually a potential customer will either want to explore or engage before they buy. Exploring is on their own. They'll read everything you have on your website. They'll Google reviews. They'll ask their friends, etc. Engaging is actively asking questions. They'll send an email, message you on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, or even call. They want to interact with a live person. 
You have to keep all three types in mind when you're doing your marketing. Not everyone is going to buy right away. So you need to think of blog posts that will educate the consumer and convince them to trust you enough to buy. It's about building trust. People buy from whom they know and trust. For some consumers, it takes longer for them to feel that they trust you enough to give you their hard earned money. So who's your target? Clearly define your target market. Are you hitting it? By now you should have used the define your target market workbook and have written out your target market or markets, you can have more than one, and the, the persona descriptions and given them names. If you haven't, then stop right here and get it done. Remember, if it's not written down, it doesn't exist. Once you've determined your target market, you need to do some research. One nice thing about all this technology is that it gives us lots of data. In fact, it's called big data. Here are some examples of what's out there. Use the materials in the resources pack to help you get started. Find which social networks your target is using the most. What types of things are they searching for? How do they use the networks? How's the best way to reach them? The more educated you are about your target, the more effective you'll be in your marketing. This is a sample tactical plan. You can edit, uh, you can edit this in your tactical plan template. If you're a solopreneur doing everything yourself, this basically becomes a to-do list for you and a calendar. If you're part of a company, it's the team's game plan. Who's going to do what and where and for how long? If you're working with a team, you'll have writers creating content, content managers looking for content to share, uh, otherwise known as curators, community managers engaging and sharing content on the networks, uh, customer service monitoring and responding. Then you have employee advocacy, getting employees involved in the plan. You wanna enter your goals in the top. If starting from scratch, the goals for the first 30 days are included, as well as how much time to spend on each network daily. However, if you determine, let's say, that you're not going to use Pinterest because you're more B2B, then you can allot that time to LinkedIn and vice versa. But understand that to build your following and reach your goals, you need to spend at least 90 minutes a day for the first 30 days. Yes, more time up front. Now it doesn't have to be a block of 90 minutes, but 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at lunch, 30 in the evening, whatever works for you. Also, as you use the networks more often, you'll become more familiar with them and it will take you less time to do your daily tasks. If you don't allot 90 minutes a day in the beginning, it will take you longer to build a following and longer to start seeing results. Weekly, you'll want to upload a video to YouTube if you determine that videos will be a good strategy for your business. And the way video marketing is going right now, any business that doesn't use videos is probably gonna get left behind in the dust. Blog at least three times a week for the first month. Then you can go down to twice a week, but never less than once a week. Monitor your site statistics at the end of each month to see what's working and not working. Check out the analytics and insights class. Now we'll go over strategies for each network. Okay, for LinkedIn, as of this recording, LinkedIn is in the process of rolling out a new layout. What that means is that not everyone sees the new layout at once. It seems to be one of, I seem to be always one of the last ones to get the new look. It happened the last time they did it a few years ago. Once I do, however, I will do an update video um, to, uh, to this module and also to the LinkedIn class. All right, so let's talk, talk strategy on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, remember, is more B2B. However, LinkedIn users are consumers too. If you're B2C, you may want to allot some of your LinkedIn time to Facebook or Pinterest. But keep in mind that LinkedIn users, again, are consumers and they usually are, 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 more, are very uh, well off because they're professionals. The idea of LinkedIn is to establish credibility and become known as an expert in your field. You want to connect with potential customers, peers, and strategic partners, and potential referral sources. Follow companies you'd like to do business with or where you feel your target market works. 
Like and comment on other people's and companies' updates. Share content with your personal updates three to five times a day. Use tools like Buffer or Hootsuite to schedule them. Post your blog posts on your company business page. Promote special events on your company page and pin the update to the top of the page till after the event. Write at least two to three times a month for LinkedIn. Weekly is ideal, especially if you're B2B. Set up automatic feeds using Hootsuite or Buffer from one or two trusted sources. Join groups where your target market is, as well as peer groups, and share content of interest to the members. But not too often. Please respect the group's rules. Participate and get noticed. On Facebook, thank people for liking your page, especially if you're trying to hit those first 30 likes. Um, uh, that, to, um, that it takes to start seeing uh, more of your insights or for the hundred that it takes to start being able to monitor competitors' pages. Facebook controls what users see based on likes, share, comments, and overall engagement. You need to post more content than you think is needed just, because, just to make sure your stuff gets seen. Once you've been doing it for a while, your insights will tell you the times when the majority of your fans are on so you can better schedule posts for maximum exposure. Find content with Feedly and share using Hootsuite or Buffer. Use relevant hashtags. Set up events and invite your friends. Share a special promotion, then pin the post to the top for more visibility. Set up automatic feeds from one or two trusted sources. Search for and like other fan pages, strategic partners, potential clients, and influencers. Check the pages feed often. Like and share posts. Facebook is more B2C than B2B. However, since just about everyone is on Facebook, you shouldn't ignore it completely. If you're B2B, it reviews come up in Google searches, so encourage your customers to review your business on Facebook too. Upload videos directly to Facebook so they become native videos. Facebook gives more exposure to videos. Broadcast yourself live on Facebook with live streaming from your business page. You can later embed that video in a blog post. Google Plus is a challenge as not too many people are active on it. You can try and search for companies and people that you'd like to connect with and add them to, to circles. When you search, be generic and see what comes up. Create empty circles categorizing uh, people before you start searching. When you circle someone, they'll be notified and then they'll decide based on what you've been posting if they'll circle, circle you back or not. You can post on your personal account as well as your business page depending on how you want to be known. Share content from Feedly using Hootsuite Use relevant hashtags, no limit. Set up automatic feeds with Hootsuite from at least one relevant blog by, um, by a trusted source in your industry. Search for active communities where your target market or referral sources are hanging out. And the keyword here is active. Look to see how often people post and when was the last post. If there isn't much activity in the group, there's no use joining. If you do find an active community, share your blog post once or twice a week. Make sure you follow the group's rules. Engage at least once or twice a week. Remember, everything shared public gets indexed in the search engine. SEO might be the only thing that Google Plus is good for, but that's powerful enough. Growing a following and search, uh, uh, on Twitter the best way to do that is to search for and follow people and companies you'd like to connect with, strategic partners, potential clients, influencers. Um, you can search um, using keywords, and if, it's, if you're local, stick in locations in there. Um, and look at people's bios and see what they're interested in. When you follow someone, they'll be notified, like on Google+, and they can decide to follow you back or not based on your tweets. While you're building your following, check notifications daily and engage. Use TweetDeck to make it easy to thank several people at once. There is a TweetDeck uh, video, so you can go ahead and take a look at that video too. Check what's trending every morning and see if there's something that you can use to spin your marketing message and get extra exposure. 
share images directly from Twitter or TweetDeck so they will show up nicely in the feed. If you share pictures from a third party like Hootsuite, all it shows on Twitter is a link, at least at, at this time. Hopefully they will make that change. Pin special promotion tweets to your Twitter profile directly on Twitter. Add hashtags, no more than two per tweet when possible. Set up automatic feeds from three to five trusted sources. Since Twitter goes so fast, you can easily post 10 to 25 tweets a day using a scheduler like TweetDeck. So you can cover the whole day with posts. The reason being is that people log on at different times of the day. And a post that goes out at eight in the morning more likely won't be seen by someone log that logs in at two in the afternoon. Look for the tools module to watch for demonstrations of these tools and remember tweets come up in google search so yes being active on twitter helps with seo pinterest is where people plan how they're going to spend their money or they use it as a bookmarking site it is more b2c however more b2b companies are using it for exposure and seo Everything is visual. You can pin pictures or videos. Search for and follow people and companies that post content that's of interest to your target market. You're going to create boards that are related or relevant to what you have to offer. And don't pin just your stuff. Repin other people's pins. For instance, I have an organize your office board because my target market are mostly small business owners and many of them work from home. I don't sell office furniture or supplies, but I thought it might be helpful to share ideas with my followers. Pin pictures and videos from your from websites using the pin it button um, on your browser. Pin as often as you want and use relevant hashtags in pin descriptions. Add keywords, you have 500 characters and use them. And always pin pictures or videos from your blog on your site. Pinterest will actually track those if you've verified your website with Pinterest. There's no denying that video, video marketing is hot. So you should have at least three professionally done videos. One corporate video telling about the business, a YouTube channel ad that's under two minutes, and one short call to action exit spot to add at the end of marketing videos. Depending on the business, you should upload at least one video a month. Weekly is ideal. If you do any live video streaming on Facebook Live or Periscope, save those videos onto your device and later upload them into YouTube. We're gonna, we're gonna be adding video marketing courses and more in-depth tutorials. Instagram is owned by Facebook and very popular with the under 40 crowd. Over 500 million users and it's all visual. Not every business is fit for Instagram. If you're more B2C, absolutely. Use hashtags for branding and put your logo or website on your pictures as links don't work on Instagram. It's great for exposure. Upload pictures from events and showcase products. Instagram stories allow you to combine several pictures. Here's more information. Take advantage of what's trending. Check it daily. Things will start trending on Twitter first, then Facebook. We'll catch up anywhere between a couple of hours to a couple of days later. I've seen items that trend on Twitter one day be still trending on Facebook two to three days later. And Twitter's gone on to the next breaking news story. As I noted in the Twitter class, some hashtags trend every week, usually in the morning. Sometimes they last all day. Evenings and weekends on Twitter, you'll find sports and TV shows trending. If you can spin your marketing message to be relevant, go for it. Always check to see why something is trending before you shoot out a marketing message. Please be considerate if it's a tragedy or a crisis. Plan ahead. Check the national what month calendars, of calendars of observance days and awareness days. Once a month, usually at the end of the month, see what's coming up into, in, um, what's, what's coming up in the next month. What's, because all these holidays and seasons and observance days, all this stuff starts trending on, uh, is always trending on Twitter and sometimes even on, on, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, the links are live in the PDF, 
So go check those out. So make sure at the end of every month you plan ahead uh, based on um, uh, what's going to be trending. This is the 1041 rule. So for every 15 posts, and this is in any given network, 10 are other people's content shared with your followers. They come from trusted sources, um, uh, stories that you find um, that you've uh, curated on Feedly, or any automated feeds that you've set up. Four are your original content or tips. It can be blog articles, videos, podcasts, pictures, tweets, and posts. And one is a direct sales post, okay, which those are calls to actions or promotions. Okay, now this is a rule of thumb. There are suggestions. The idea is not to just post your promotional content. Remember, you can automate a lot of the media, but you still have to be social. You are sharing and serving, not selling. How much to post when? One of, be, one of the tools I'm gonna be demonstrating in the tools uh, module is uh, audience, um, which, um, which will tell you the best time to tweet to get the most exposure. Your analytics and insights will tell you the best time to post in the other network. So don't skip the analytics class. So on Twitter, because it goes so fast, you can easily post 15 to 20 posts a day. And you can do two promo posts, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And there's another tool called um, Tweet Jutebox or Social Jutebox, they may have just changed their name, um, that can, you can automate those promotional posts in there. Um, Facebook, uh, two to five posts a day. One a day can be a promo post. LinkedIn, five to 10 a day to your updates. One a day can be a promo post. Two or three uh, posts a week to groups, but be very careful in posting promo posts. Respect the group's rules. Google Plus, five to 10 a day to your updates. One a day can be a promo post. Two to three posts a week to communities. Pinterest Unlimited, go pin crazy. Uh, but a fair warning on Pinterest, you can lose track of time very easily. So set a timer. If you allotted 15 minutes, that's it. So when starting out, you wanna put out as much fresh content as possible. So blog at least three times a week. At, you know, if you can't do three, then at least do two. And not until you've got your following going and you've built momentum that you should go down to one a week. On the social networks, you need to spend 90 minutes a day for the first 30 days. It doesn't have to be a block of 90 minutes. Spread it out as you can fit it into your schedule. Engage, share, retweet, thank people for liking your Facebook page, for following, retweeting, and mentioning you on Twitter. Like and share other people's posts comment on other people's posts in groups and communities. Participate and get noticed. So some time-saving tips and tricks. So check Feedly on their mobile app. You can save posts for later that you want to share. And they have a new feature in Feedly where you can actually categorize um, and save um, some uh, blog articles and posts to read later in specific categories. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, get on the networks themselves to interact with other people's posts a few times a week, daily if possible. Create a text file or Word document with tweets and posts of blog posts and links and promotion, copy and paste. This will make it quicker. If you see something that's trending, on Twitter, let's say, and you remember you just did a blog post on that very topic, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you can, you can go really quickly and just go grab the URL and then, and then write a tweet um, that goes with, with whatever is trending, okay? Uh, don't log out of the networks, okay? Use your, um, split your time during the day. Use the free tools that are covered in the, in the tools course. Okay, so how do, you, how do you manage it all in 30 minutes a day? Well, once you've built a following, you then go into management and maintenance mode. So you wanna focus on the networks that are driving the most traffic to your website. So that means you need to check your site statistics at the end of every month and take a look and see which ones are driving the most traffic to your website and where your target market is. 
where you're getting the most engagement. If people, a lot of people are liking your, you're getting more engagement on Facebook um, and, and not so much on Twitter, then you want to spend more time on Facebook. If you're getting a lot more uh, engagement in, on Twitter, then you're gonna, you, you might not, you might want to spend more time on Twitter and a little less on Facebook. So, so your time is going to be dictated by your analytics and where the where the people are where you're getting results and also where you're building the relationships that you want okay it might be on linkedin you're building relationships uh, for referral sources so you want to make sure that you that you're touching linkedin at least two to three times a week so and so you, you want to touch the others at least at least three or four times a week so um, you're not, you don't have to be there every single day on, on your secondary one. So you want to find which are your primary networks where you're getting the most action and where your target market is. Then you're going to have your secondary networks and even your tertiary ones. Like for some people, Instagram is, is very tertiary and so is Pinterest. On um, some other ones, LinkedIn might be that tertiary network, you know. So, um, so you don't have to spend all the time on all the networks. That's impossible, right? And and if they're not working, they're not working. Um, and then you've got Snapchat. Okay, if you're trying to reach the under twenty-five crowd, you've got to you know learn about Snapchat. So it you know it's just a matter of who you're trying to reach, and then who's bringing you results. Okay, next is analytics. Okay, so don't worry, analytics are not that difficult to understand and they tell you a lot and I'll walk you through everything. So if you have any questions, please email me and I'll be happy to either do another video or, um, or schedule a coaching session with you. So I hope this really helped you get strategized and get your tactical plan going. And so you have an idea of, of how to effectively use the social media networks. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.